it's Jörg. And today it's Jörg only. Kirsten and I thought it a good idea to do a special. And what I want to do today is tell you something about my biggest passion. And my biggest passions are books. I simply love books. I love reading. I love yeah, browsing in bookstores. I love going to libraries. I simply love the smell and the touch of books. And that all started when I was a child. And what I will do is I'll show you the books, one of the, uh, some of the books, not one, some, some of the books I love most and recommend a drink, which you can have when reading these books. But the books I love most are, oh, be careful, are the ones from C.S. Forrester. These are the Hornblower books. I simply love these books. And I read them when I was 13 years old. Yeah, for the first time. Yeah, 13 years old. And that was when I discovered that, let's say, our town had a huge public library. And I found them in our public library and I started reading them. And I simply loved these books. Because they are simply, uh, yeah, I love the adventures of Horatio Hornblower. And I think I can identify very much with him. And what I think what you should drink when you read Horatio Hornblower is drink a good glass of port wine. Because naval officers, that's at least what I think, yeah, always liked a good port. Now, the second book I want to show you, it's maybe not a book. It's a comic book and it's about Asterix. Asterix, who was a Gaul and who lived around, what does it say? It says 50 before Christ. So it was at the times of Julius Caesar. And it tells the story of Asterix and his friend Obelix. And I think they've published more than 30 comic books about these two guys. And they're just fun to read. They're really, really, yeah. And you can read them at all age. You can read them when you're 10 years old, but you can also read them when you're 80 year, years old. And they're interesting because they show you a part of, let's say, the ancient history, but also just, yeah, they're nice to look at. The pictures are really good. And it's, and it's not nonsense. And they're really, the stories are really good told and they're just good books to read. And what I think what you should drink to these books is a ginger beer. Or you could drink a beer. But I prefer a ginger beer because it's just the, let's say the thing you can drink when it's warm because that's when you read these books in the summertime, when you're happy. Yeah, that's when you should read this book. And I I want to show you is from Oscar Wilde and also it's not a book because it's a play and it's the importance of being earnest and I'm a little fan of Oscar Wilde because what I love is his wit is his the way he plays with the English language which I can, even as a German, sense, because I've read his books in 
let's say English. I've never read them in German. And I just like and love how he plays with the words, how he's, yeah, how he does things. And if you don't want to read Wim Pods of Being Erst, that's also a good film. Huh? With, I think it's Colin Firth and Rupert Everett. And it's, a, and it's really good because it's very close to the play. And so, yeah, you can enjoy it. And what you should enjoy when you read Oscar Wilde, and especially the importance of being earnest, is take a good glass of gin. And I drank a Japanese gin, Roku gin, and I put in some cucumbers. Cucumbers because there's a, in the book, there's a good scene where, yeah, they play with cucumber sandwiches. But I don't want to tell more because you have to read the book. If you want to have some fun and um, yeah, take Oscar Wilde. Now I want to show you a book from an American author. And it's and he's very he's very very famous and I think he's well known all over the world, but I'm sure this book isn't much well known. And it's from Mark Twain and it's look it up. It's a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court. And I've read it in German. And it's, I think, one of the lesser known books from Mark Twain, because I think everybody knows Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. Because it tells a story about an, it's a early 19th century American dropped into the sixth uh, century British society, or English society at the court of King Arthur and how he tried to modernize the court, how he tried to do things at that time and in some ways how he failed. And I've even read it is one of the first science fiction books because it tells you something about time travel. So it's a really good read yeah, and it's a book you can, yeah, I think it's best read as a kind of bad time story. And it's best read with a good glass of, you know, water with some fruit cordial. I took some, I think it was crushed lime and elderflower. I know crushed lime and mint. So, yeah, it's a good book to read in the bed. So a good bedtime story. I was born in the 60s and when I grew up uh, it was let's say TV was still a kind of new medium and uh, it was always always funny to watch old movies on the TV screen and one of my it's a childhood heroes in the movies was David Niven and that's why when I found it in a bookstore, I bought this autobiography, which is called The Moon's a Balloon, which is written by David Niven 
and tells about his yeah, life in Hollywood, but also about his life before Hollywood. So how he, how he grew up, what he did before he started filming. And it's a really, really good written book. It's funny to read. And what I like about it most is it's not a book which tells you sensational stories or he's not doing dirty laundry. He's not talking bad about people. He's just telling funny stories. But he also gives you a good insight into his life, which hasn't been easy all the time. Yeah? He lost his wife uh, and he started serving in the military as an officer. Yeah? So he wasn't always the nice, shiny guy, but yeah, he, yeah, but you can find out when you read this book. And I recommend drinking to this book a good glass of whiskey, of Scottish whiskey. Why? Because the first job David Niven really had was as a commissioned officer in a Scottish regiment in the 30s. So that's, that's a thing I never knew. I knew he served uh, in the Second World War, but I never knew he, let's say, was trained as an officer, yeah, as a young guy. So, and here's a, a book, I think, which you can yeah, also read in, a, uh, in, a, in an afternoon and which, which, which is really interesting to read and in some ways sad, but somewhere, in some ways uplifting. And it's called The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. And it's from Jean-Dominique Bobby. And the interesting thing about this book is it's been written by a guy who had a stroke and who after that stroke was, how you can call it, locked in because he couldn't move. The only thing in his body he could move was his eyelid. And, but his brain was, was fully functional and what he did and what he, I don't know how he did it, but he could start communicating with his eye just by the movements of his eyelid and within a year's time he dictated the whole book and it tells about his thoughts about something about his life about yeah how he managed to cope with the situation to have a fully functional brain but not to speak not be able to move and it's very, very sad, but on the other side, it's very uplifting because he shows you what the human mind can do. I've got the greatest respect for this achievement. And this will, uh, there's also a movie about this book. I haven't seen the movie. I've only read the book, but it's a really good read. And it re to me, it up uplifted me because it showed to me that people in the, let's say, terrible, in, in such a terrible situation that he still can be happy or have a kind of happiness or have a kind of freedom. And it's called, that's why it's called the diving bell and the butterfly, because he says he's, his body is like in a diving bell where he's locked in and he can't get out and he can't move but his mind is like a butterfly flying around, having his freedom, and he can go with his mind wherever he wants. He can travel with his mind. And yeah, that's that's was really, really 
uplifting film myself. And I recommend, if you read that book, have a good cup of tea and some good cake. That's what I did at least. Kirsten made me a cake, a really, really good cheesecake. close to the end. I've only got one book left. The last book I want to show you is from H.G. Wells and it's The War of the Worlds. And it's a really it's a it's a really good read and it's one of the first science fiction books. And it tells about what happens in Victorian times when Martians invade the earth. And it's a really it's really nicely told and it's yeah shows you really what would happen and I when I when, when I read it I could really see the pictures and I could really imagine yes this would have happened people getting crazy people believing uh, let's say some kind of gods are coming and he's really telling stories it's not a, it's not a yeah, a funny book to read, but it's really interesting to read and it's, yeah, I, I, I liked it. And what I recommend with a book is a good glass of wine. Because look, the book cover is red, wine is, wine is red. So that's the reason why I took wine. And you can see which kind of books I love. I love history books. I love books which tell an adventurous story. Okay, I haven't shown you all my history books because I really love history books and I love books which like, are philosophical or which are mathematical. So I really like to read these kinds of books. I'm not the guy who's reading murder mystery stories. That's not my kind of book. Which I think is also the reason why we're here. Because you can see most of them are playing in Victorian times or have a big British background. So. Yeah. Before I finish, I think everybody now wants to know what is the book you are reading right now. And the next book I'm going to read is from Viktor Frankl and it's Man's Search for Meaning. And I'm really looking forward to this book because I think it's going to be interesting to read. Because Viktor Frankl was is an Austrian or was an Austrian and he yeah was a Jew and he was imprisoned in one of the concentration camps and the book tells about what he saw and what he experienced at that time but he also but he also it also tells you how he managed to cope with all of that how he managed to cope after he let's say was freed and it, I think that's very interesting. And I've read critics about this book and it also says that this book gives us now good ideas how to get more resilient, how to cope with our everyday problems. Because if, let's say, people like Viktor Frankl find a way to cope with, let's say, living or being in a concentration camp, 
think we can find ways to cope with our, our life and find ways to, to, to solve problems or to get things done. So now I think this was a lot of books and I hope you're still awake. And yeah, maybe I hope I've inspired you to read more. Maybe read one of these books I've shown you. If not, just read. I think read, reading is always good. So I hope you liked this video. I want to wish you some happy Easter. Take care of yourself, stay safe, and I hope that Krishna and I will see you soon on our channel. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.